Good morning. I'm Phyllis from southernfrugal.com. Uh, this morning I wanted to read some scripture for y'all uh, just to kind of support the smoothies really. Uh, it's from the book of Daniel and I know y'all are familiar with the uh, Daniel fast. A lot of uh, denominations use the Dan Daniel fast which really consists of, of vegetables and I'm guessing some fruit too but Anyway, I wanted to read this because something really stood out for me yesterday. Uh, we've been having our devotions in the morning uh, in, for I'd say, uh, maybe about three or four days uh, with um, Second Kings. And you know how the Bible works. Every time you read again what you thought you knew, uh, you learn something new. So that's really what happened here. And so anyway, that took us to the book of Daniel because we were back and forth trying to figure out all these different kingdoms and Medo-Persians, uh, Alexander the Great and all that, trying to figure out how all that went in together and what was mentioned in prophecy. But anyway, I wanted to read this in uh, the first chapter of Daniel, verse 12. And that's where uh, Daniel... Uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, I hope I pronounced that right. Now they were later named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so y'all probably recognize those names. Anyway, so the uh, Daniel had asked the uh, chief of the eunuchs if he could just not eat the dainty food that the king had said they should all eat. Now remember these were young, very young men, youths they called them. And so anyway, um, Daniel had asked the uh, chief eunuch that, that now God had caused uh, him to have to show favor towards Daniel. So he said, prove your servants, I beseech you for 10 days and let us be given a vegetable diet and water to drink. In other words, they were having no wine and no dainties from the king's table. Uh, and then let our appearance and the appearance of the youths who ate at the king's rich dainties be observed and compared by you. Deal with us, your servant, according to what you see. So then, here's what happened. So the man consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. So that sort of tells you that in ten days you can see a difference. And at the end of 10 days, it was seen that they were looking better and had taken on more flesh than all the youth who ate of the king's rich dainties. So the steward took away their rich dainties and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. Now, I think they were probably having fruits too because there's a little, you know, in the translation. So uh, anyway, uh, as for these four use, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And so they continued to have the vegetables apparently for about three years, which I had not realized. So, of course, Daniel uh, really prospered uh, under the king uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, and he appointed him to be over a whole province in the kingdom and all kinds of stuff. And the other part was that it said that Daniel continued even in the reign of Cyrus, which would have meant, I'm just guessing here, that even when Cyrus was king, he must have been in his 90s, y'all. He had to have been, I think. But anyway, I thought that was very interesting uh, I had not thought about having the smoothies and the vegetables and the fruits in them that, that maybe we would be smarter. I don't know. I think we might. Uh, I don't know how all that works, but something's changed for sure. So anyway, all right, I'm going to cut this off and get this smoothie stuff ready. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Uh, I had most of the stuff already ready. So this morning we're having the baby greens. Now these are not organic, y'all. They're just regular baby greens from California. But anyway, that's a good two big handfuls in there.
Also, I don't have any frozen bananas. This is a fresh banana. I'm going to use some celery. And I'm, that tough part, I just cut off the dark part that was on the bottom. This is the inner core of the celery. I'm going to use all of this. Kind of a fat carrot. Two mandarin oranges. Oh, I don't know, half a cup of strawberries, just to say I did. And uh, also, let me turn this down. We're having the usual two cubes of uh, ground up coconut. I do this for the, oil, the good oil that's in the coconut. It's got a teeny bit of protein in it too. And we've got uh, three cubes of cream of wheat and the steel cut oatmeal. Two cubes of ground up almonds. I'm using three dates to sweeten them. This is um, red kale that I ground up and froze. Two little cubes of that. So that's it. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the peanut butter because it does give you staying power even though it adds more calories it also adds uh, vegetable protein all right so let me get this stuff cut up peeled here yeah so y'all i know i haven't done my shopping yet for the house i did the uh, grocery shopping yesterday and i'll have to tell you well, let me turn it up and we'll talk uh, our Aldi's in Orangeburg, South Carolina, had its grand opening yesterday. And I figured it would be really crowded, so my plan was I went on to Walmart because I had to get some other stuff there too. And uh, so when I went, it was, I don't know, maybe 9.30ish or so. And there really weren't any cars at all in front of Aldi's because Aldi's is right across from Walmart and uh, so I thought well it's just early so I was in Walmart oh a good hour maybe about an hour and 15 minutes and I came out of course got my stuff all loaded in the car and everything and uh, so I pulled out of Walmart and I went down to the far end because I wanted to see how many cars were at Aldi's because I figured you wouldn't even be able to get in the parking lot since it was a grand opening. There were three cars there, y'all. I felt so bad for them. And there was a person out there putting up a great big sign that said grand opening. Now, part of the problem uh, with the Aldi's there is their location, y'all. They're on the opposite side of the street from Walmart. And so, and they're on a corner, but I can see that it would be a little difficult being on that side of the road. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit difficult, but I really don't think that was the reason that there were no cars there. I think a lot of people don't really know what Aldi's is. I mean, they're cheaper than Walmart, y'all. A lot cheaper. And uh, so anyway, I felt kind of bad about that, but I'm sure... Yeah, the next time I go over there, I'll see more cars there. Now, it was raining a little bit, and that might have had something to do with it, but still, you know, there should have been more cars there. Cutting up the carrot now, and by the way, the Vitamix will grind this carrot right up. I just cut it up to so I can get it all in the Vitamix. We'll dump the hope that this smoothie is going to be sweet enough. This is about a half a cup of strawberries, the two mandarin oranges, and I just peel those. Now they don't have seeds in them, so you can just dump them right in. I'll put the rest of this stuff in. Now it's still partially frozen. Yeah, y'all, I have not got my shopping done yet. Hold on a minute. Let me get that dish rag down here. Um, because Mr. Bucky said we have to do under the house first. And I know that the shopping will probably be fun and putting down the, the moisture barrier is not gonna be fun at all. But anyway, and I don't think I brought y'all up to date on that. The guy who came first quoted us a price to put down the moisture barrier under the house 
of, uh, he said it would be right at $1,000. And I was like, what? To put down plastic under the house? He said, oh yeah, because it takes a lot of labor. And that's probably true. But we're not doing that, y'all. And Bucky was like, what? And so then the guy said, oh, okay. He said, I'll do it on the side for you for 400 and I'll just get one of my friends to help me or something like that. And we said, well, okay, we, we need to think about it. So after he left, Mr. Bucky said, we're putting down the moisture barrier, get ready. So that's what we're gonna do now. I have put down a moisture barrier before at another house. Me and the girls in the prayer group did it, y'all. It was really fun too. And uh, so, uh, Anyway, that's what we're going to do now. Our house will be different than the house that we did before, me and the girls in the prayer group, because we've got a much taller crawl space, so you don't have to, you know, get down so low. And so my request was, okay, I'm willing to help do that, but uh, can we have some cold weather because I'm afraid of bugs? And... Uh, I don't know how many bugs are under there because we spray pretty thoroughly around the house. I would say there probably aren't many, if any, bugs under there, but still, I'm scared of them. So uh, anyway, as it turns out, we're going to get some cold from y'all people up north, and it should be here on Friday. So. Uh, he said we would wait until we'll do it Friday and, and if we don't finish it on Friday, we'll finish up on Saturday. And so both days is supposed to be cold. In fact, Friday night is supposed to be freezing here. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, so anyway, I might record some of that. Uh, I, I might be too busy being afraid, but we'll, we'll record some of it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and grind this up and we'll be right back. All right, I haven't tasted of this because it doesn't matter. We're going to drink it anyway. Those uh, strawberries tend to make the smoothie sour. and uh, But we're just going to drink it like this anyway. The only sweetener were the dates. So I don't think I'm going to have any, but just a teeny bit of overage this morning. Yeah, just a little bit. All right, maybe about half a cup. All right, here we go. Teeny bit sour, teeny bit, but it tastes good. Uh, it, it's, it's okay, we can drink it. All right, so the other thing that, uh, of course, Mr. Bucky's working outside. Uh, he's almost finished with the garden. And I'm, of course, working inside on the windows and uh, cleaning the storm windows and all that. And so in the process of uh, doing the uh, windows, the screens on the storm windows have um, deteriorated yeah, from the sun. They're, they're, the screens are the fiberglass. And so I'm redoing the screens. And I think... What we'll do, I'll, I'll do a screen for you right at the end of this, and it's really easy. It just takes a little patience, we'll say. Anyway, I'll record that too at the end of this, so we'll see you in just a few minutes. We're going to have our devotions, drink our smoothie, take our vitamins, and we'll be back. I'll, I've already got everything set up here on the table because I've already done four of the screens, but I'll do one and show you all how easy it is. We'll be right back. All right, we have finished our devotions and our smoothie this morning, and I'm going to go ahead and get started on the screens. And I wanted to show you all how easy it is to do these. You don't have to hire somebody to do them, and a woman can definitely do it. It's really not that hard at all. So, of course, you need the screen. Now, I'm putting back on this the uh, uh, fiberglass screen just because I think it looks better. But uh, anyway, it should last for many years because what's on here has been on here for, I don't know, I don't even know, 25 years, I guess. But uh, anyway, it, it'll last many years. And you can get this at Lowe's. I'm sure you can get it at Home Depot, too. And it really doesn't cost that much. I think it was, hmm, let me guess and say, $18 for a roll that's 
36 inches wide and 25 feet long. Now I needed 30 feet, so I had to get two rolls. So I'll probably be doing some of the screens downstairs too. But the ones downstairs look pretty good. It's the sun that messes them up and causes them to just go bad. And I want to show you how bad. Watch this. You can just stick your finger right through it. Now it's got a, I think they call it a spline, S-P-L, no, S-P-I-L-E, no, let me get it, hold on. There it is, S-P-L-I-N-E, and that's what this little rubber, I call it a little gasket is, that's actually holding the screen in. There's a little groove around it. And let me turn this down so you can see. I got two little dogs in here helping me this morning. All right, so that thing runs, that little rubber thing right there. And you can get that out by just sticking something in there. And let me find out where it starts. Okay, it starts right there. So all I'm going to do is, let me turn this down so y'all can see, there. All I'm going to do is just, I'm just use these little scissors and stick, stick them in there and get it up a little bit so I can get a hold of it. Now if you want to, you can buy this new, it comes in rolls, I mean you just, they, you buy it and they roll off however much you need. But uh, I'm going to reuse the same one. So see how it comes out real easy. Now, when it comes out, there's, of course, dirt and debris that are in there. So I'm going to take this out on the porch and pull it all the way out. And we'll be right back. Okay, we got the screen out. And it's pretty dirty when you're getting it out because dirt accumulates over the years in these little grooves. I'm going to use the same uh, spline, I guess you say. Anyway, I'm going to wipe it off just with a damp rag. It's going to be pretty dirty, but it's still good. So I figure I don't need to be paying for that too. I'll just use this. See how dirty? Part of that's the uh, material coming off too, but it was also very dirty. See, really dirty. I'm going to wipe that up. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, measure out the screen. And I think if I recall correctly, these are 24 by 30, I think. Let me measure them, I'll let y'all know. Yeah, they're 24 wide and 30 long. So what I'm going to do is just roll some of the, let me move y'all back a little bit, there. Can you see now? Move it back a little more. Move that. There. All right. So we're going to take the screen and just let it overlap an inch or two and roll it down to the end. And then I'm going to cut it off. Just and you can cut this with just these little cheap scissors will cut it even. So I'm going to make sure I've got enough little uh, overlap on the edge and just cut that. It's real easy to cut. All right. So now that's cut, and oh, I don't know if you can see or not. Oops. All right. So now I'm going to line it up, you know, so it's sort of uh, the right, you know, so it's not all catty cornered on the uh, frame here. And now I'm going to clamp it down. I'm using clamps like this. You can buy these in Lowe's too, by the way. We've used them for furniture and for making frames and that kind of thing. They have come in real handy over the years. So I'm going to clamp down one side. But if you've got someone around who can hold one side for you, then you don't even need the clamps. So we're making sure 
that we put it down on the right side because this has got a little groove in it where that little uh, spline was. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, so I'm going to clamp these down to hold it really on two sides. And I'm leaving the little edge open there so I can get that little piece of rubber in there. Just clamp it right down. Then I'm going to put two on the end down here, making sure everything's straight. And what this will do is also keep it tight. Well, I don't, I don't I have to move it down, y'all. I have to take them back off. All right, we'll be right back. Let me get this situated. I've got to move everything down a little bit. All right, I got it all clamped down. So these clamps work like another set of hands. At least that's what the way they work for me. Now, this is a tool I'm using. They're all different kinds here. But this particular one has a little cutter on the end. And I found that that doesn't work nearly as well as just a regular razor blade does. So I don't use that. But the roller is concave. Can you see that? And so we're going to roll this into that little groove that's right in there. And because I'm using the same one that was in there, I'm just going to pull it a little bit with my hands. You don't want to pull it too tight. And I'm just going to use a big screwdriver to get it right in the corner and get it started. And when it, when it goes into the little groove, you can tell it'll kind of snap in there. And it'll look like everything's going to be real puckered, but it'll straighten out. All right, so I'm going to hold it with one hand down here, just not real tight, but firm, and line up my little rubber gasket, we'll call it. And then all you do is put this over it. And then I'll let go and just roll it in. And you can tell when it goes all the way in like it should. See, it's all the way in now. So let's go on down and again, I'm just holding this a little bit, not real tight. And don't worry if it looks like it's kind of puckering because it'll really all straighten out. And just use some little bit of your strength. And then I just go back with both hands on it and make sure it's all the way in. It's really, really easy and it looks so good when you get through. All right, I'm gonna do the rest of this and we'll be right back. This will take me about five minutes. All right, I wanted to move y'all up closer for this. Now, you can cut this with the little attachment that comes on the um, this little uh, screen tightener they call it it's got a little razor blade edge and it's a little hook there but after working with this last night on several of the screens i just decided i could find something easier so this is what i'm using this is the kind of little razor blade holder that you use to scrape paint off windows and you just put your straight edge in there and clamp it shut to me, that works better. Now, there's a little groove in there where we put in that little uh, rubber gasket. And if you just hold your razor blade in your hand or whatever, and you could also use a utility uh, cut, like a box cutter thing, but we've got that too. And I don't think that works as well as this does. So you just hold it at an angle and put it just above that little gasket. And there'll be a little metal part there that'll kind of hold it in place and you just cut down. And my razor blade's a little dull, but it still cuts. See? So I'm gonna cut the rest of this. Now I did cut the other three sides, not on camera. So again, I'm just gonna hold it at an angle down there just above that little uh, rubber gasket. And just be careful and don't cut yourself and don't cut the screen. 
in the corners you have to kind of work with them a little bit because you can't get that razor blade in there too easily. There we go. That got it. Now we've cut all that extra off and our screen is complete. So this really probably took me, if I had to guess, I'd say about seven minutes from beginning to end. It's really very easy to do and the results are pretty extraordinary. There they are. Pretty nice. And this should last for many, many years now. See? And it's in there tight enough. You don't have to worry about it being super, super tight. And you also don't have to worry about whether it's exactly even or not because it's, you know, when, once you uh, are using the uh, roller and pushing that into the little groove there, it kind of tightens itself up a little bit. Anyway, and I don't think mine's on there exactly straight, but it doesn't matter. All right, there it is. All right, we will see y'all next time. And ladies, you can do this. It, it's not hard at all. The hardest part probably is when you have to go over this and use both hands to make sure it's in the little groove. You just push down a little harder, that's all. All right, see y'all next time.